Yeah. I'm trying to have a kid, but like no one wants to have a kid with me. I like really be, I be like, let's have a kid. She be like, nah. I think I'll be a good dad. Put, give my son a face set. Sign up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I definitely feel like there's that one girl that I will always love. And she knows it. She knows it. Yeah, most of my music is about her, too. She's the one you should have those kids with, the ones you were talking about. She's engaged. Yeah. Lil Tracy and this bitch, and shout out Montreality. Probably the, uh, have you watched Mr. Meaty? Uh, this is, the, you never seen Mr. Meaty? What? Yeah, Mr. Meaty, this dude, he's like a chef, or he's like a, a fat, he works at a fast food place. His name's Josh. I fuck with him just because, um, like he looks cool as fuck. I'm about to get a tattoo of him. You should look him up. It's pretty hard. He don't really represent anything, he's just stupid. Like, he's a dumbass nigga that, um, he's like an emo, um, fast food cashier dude. And he's just hella dumb. Yeah, I just fuck with him. Kinda reminds me of me a little bit. I never watched anime because my ex, my first ex ever, she loved anime. So after we broke up, anime was just like triggering. So I just never, Got into it for that reason. The realest shit I ever wrote. Huh. Damn. What is the realest shit I ever wrote? What is it, bro? <laughs> shit. Probably, um, uh, I said, here we go again, waking up again. I know a lot of shit, but I don't know what day it is. I really like you, but I'ma die fast. So you should run away and don't look back. I think that was pretty real. I feel like I have a lot of real shit. I'm so luxurious, them pearls on my neck. God, I'm furious. Alex McQueen got these bitches looking curious. But I don't want none of these hoes bacteria. <laughs> and I was like, I slow down on them drugs, now I run it up. But my diamonds got no cuts where they really bust. I don't shop at Saks Fifth because everybody does. Chanel pearls on my neck from 1991, bitch. I don't think you can, I don't, I think it has to just come natural. Like, sometimes I don't even look in the mirror, I just put some shit on. And somebody would be like, bro, you look sick, bro. It's like, for real? I, I low-key don't really um, think about fashion that much. Like, I kind of just, if I see some shit that I like, I just get it. Yeah. Like, I'm wearing this uh, fucking pink mossy oak. I don't know, bro. My advice would be just don't get so caught up in, like, the trends of fashion. Like, them big-ass Balenciagas. Uh, no offense to anyone that wears them. But I just... I'm trying to change... Actually, I'm trying to um, <clears throat> get on a more formal... 
Formal Wave. I, got, I bought these Ferragamo loafers. They're hard. My mom used to make me wear a fat farm. I remember I had a, um, a full Sean John denim jacket with the jeans. Timberland's still popping. But I, I remember I was rocking rock Tim's back then. Mm. What else? E oh yeah, Echo. That's the one with the rhino, right? I fuck with that. I'm gonna have to bring that back. They should, do they still make stuff? Yeah, but Fat Farm, Sean John, can't really remember. Rockaway. Rockaway. Yeah. Fubu. Fubu. <laughs> I don't fuck with that, bro. <laughs> I don't like Fubu. I'm, I realized that health was important. I mean, I'm not the healthiest dude. Like, I still be getting turned. I be getting drunk and shit. But I don't do like drugs no more. Smoke. But I realized like after I had a heart attack, like. I was like, oh shit, like, I'm 20. I was 22 at the time. I'm 22, like, can't be having a heart attack, bro. So, you know what I mean? I just put all the, left the drugs behind. I'm gonna be mummified by then. I'm gonna be dead. I do not wanna be 80. I'm trying to die when I'm 27. I'm trying to be part of that club. But if I was, I would just be an old ass man with saggy face tats. And like, I would have a bitch that was like 40. <laughs> and she would be fine as hell. And, but I wouldn't even be able to fuck. I'll just look at her <laughs> and buy her shit. But yeah. I'll be a swaggy old man, I think. My brotherhood with Peep, I have so many good memories with them. Um, let me think. I remember one time we hopped in an Uber and we was chilling, chilling. And then he was like, Tracy, look. And then I looked and the, uh, the Uber driver like under, like where the pedal is. This nigga had a, um, his iPad on the ground, but with like, had a little powder on it, like a big old powder. And I was like, this nigga tweaking, bro. <laughs> but it was funny, cause he was just like an old man. Like, I wonder, I don't know what it was. I remember one time um, we, we did this show. I forget where we was at, but it was slam packed. Like it was packed. And like, but we had to enter through the back, so we had to walk through the crowd. And like, we was walking, I swear, bro, them bitches was like, trying to tear our dicks out of our pants, bro. They was like, we were like, oh my God. That shit was funny, bro. I would describe him as colorful. Like, he just, like a, like a rainbow. Everybody loves rainbows. When you see it, it's like, oh, look. You know what I mean? That's how I describe you. Really, I found myself, um, I think, through acid. I started to do acid at, really, at a young age. And that like, made me think differently, kind of. I think that's... I don't want to say it's all on acid, but... I think that really like put me in a different mindset. Psychedelics, bro, like it just helped. It helped me a lot create creatively. Like my whole first m music phase was based around like my my thoughts on acid, like trippy shit. I used to chill in the forest and just be frying off of acid. With, with the bros. Yeah. 
I remember one time um, I did acid and I was looking in the mirror, like staring in the mirror. And bruh, no cap, my eyes just like turned all the way black. Like, and then I start turning into like a lion. And I just felt powerful and I was like, ah. <laughs> For real though. Like seriously, it was crazy. I probably do like shrooms once every year. Kind of, it really helps. I'm not gonna lie. You should do it if you haven't. The most romantic thing I've ever done. Uh, I don't know if this is really romantic, but one time I, um, this girl got exposed on the internet and then I fought the nigga that did it for her and then we started dating. What's the worst heartbreak like or breakup you ever went through, you know? Like the worst one, the one that hurt you the most. Yeah, my girl cheated on me while I was locked up with my bro with my best friend. That hurt. I still don't I still hate her. But I love her. <sighs> yeah, that was fucked up though. Lately, I've been on some I've been having a lot of threesomes. Like a lot. <laughs> I had one last night. But they like made me. I didn't even really want to. They were like, you're gonna fuck us. I was like, alright. <laughs> yeah. I had a f I had a foursome. Yeah, in Austin. But, and then I feel like I exerted so much energy that like, I just passed out. Like, and I didn't remember falling asleep and I woke up, bruh, my shit was gone. Yep, stole my shit to the youth. My message to the youth, don't be a follower. Just be yourself. Love your brothers and your sisters. Get money. Stay safe. You're not alone. Even if you feel like you are. You know what I mean? And that's hard. It's really, you can't just feel better. But you gotta like have the strength to just try to Look at the bright side. Mom's reality show. And apparently, I don't know if I'm gonna get arrested for this, but apparently to kill the crabs and cook them, you need to just take a pair of scissors, big ass cooking scissors, and just straight cut their faces off. So I, I'm a mass crab murderer. I cut the faces off of 300 crabs that day and I never went back.